Hey YouTube, really glad you could join me today. You found the second video in my introduction to HTML and CSS. If you're just getting your feet wet in the fabulous world of web development, well you found the right place and I encourage you to go check out the first video if you didn't see that one. Today we're actually going to be writing some HTML, so well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started! In the last video, we looked at how HTML works. The only thing is, as much as I'd love to be able to make up my own tags like I did in that last video, we just can't do that. There are lots of tags out there, but luckily there are only a few of them that you'll need to know to really get started. As a quick side note, don't be shy about pausing or even rewinding the video as you go. Do this at your own pace and make sure you understand as you go along instead of just blindly following and having no idea what you're really doing. And if I confuse you with anything, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to clarify. Before we can get started, we need some software to write our code in. There are lots of free options out there and the one I'm going to be using for my demos is called Atom, which I have on my screen right now. Uh, it's completely free. There are other free ones out there that are really popular like Notepad, which we can see right here, uh, Notepad++ I should say, as well as Brackets, which you can see right here. So if you don't have a code editor, pause the video, follow one of the links, I'm going to put the links in the description below, download one of them, and join me back here once you're ready to go. So you've installed your code editor. But what do we do with it? Well, the very first step to building a website is to create a place for it to live. So I'm going to go and make a new folder on my desktop. So I'm just going to right click, new folder, and my first website. And there we go, I got a nice little folder there. And this is where my website's going to live. It's the root directory. Anything that I need for my site is going to be in there. Now I wanna open this up in my code editor. So I'm gonna right click, and if you're using Atom or Brackets, I have both of them right there. Uh, I can just click on Open with Atom, and we wait for the program to open. And there we go, so I opened up my folder. Let's just bring it on the screen so you guys can see it. And make that a little bigger. There we go. Great. Uh, so I've got it open, but there's nothing here. So we actually need to uh, go ahead and um, start working. Now, one thing, if you are using like Atom like I am, uh, it's possible you don't have anything along the top here. Uh, so if you want to get to any of them, if you just have to push Alt, uh, the Alt key on the keyboard brings up this little menu. So to make your first file, we just go to File and File New, or you can use the either, if you're on a Mac, Command N, or on a PC, Control N, to make your new file. And I have a nice little untitled file here. Now one thing you have to know is code editors, they can deal with lots of different types of files. Just like with Microsoft Word, you can save a doc file, the new docx files, PDFs, and some other stuff from there as well, RTFs and whatnot. And it's a little bit of the same deal here, except there's no default. They don't, it's not like Word where the default is a doc and, and there's all these other options. In this case, there's no default. There's a whole bunch of different things from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, PHP, ASP.NET, it just goes on and on and on really. Um, so we need to tell it what type of file this is going to be, and the best way to do that, or the only really way, is to save our file. So I'm going to just come down to here and hit save, and it's going to ask me how I want to save my file, and I'm going to call it index.html, and I have to write the HTML out. It's not like those other ones, as I just mentioned, there's no default. So I'm going to write out .html, and I'm going to push save, and we can get going. Um, now there's, an, um, there's a reason I'm calling it index.html and it has to do with how servers work and my index is with a lowercase i. We're always just going to be using lowercase stuff. Um, and just for now, know that whatever you want your home page to be, that has to be your index.html. We don't use homepage.html or home.html or anything else. The, the home page of your site is your index.html. So we've got our HTML file, but well, what do we need to do now? A good thing to do is actually to open up your page. So I'm going to minimize this for one second. I'm going to find my folder and I'm going to open up my index.html. And uh, let's just bring that onto the screen so you can see it. And it's a nice blank document right now. Let's just fix that up a little bit. 
And this is usually how I like to work. Uh, let's open Adam back up. Okay, there we go. So basically what I want is I want my code editor on the side here and I want my browser over here so I can see the two of them at the same time while I work. Uh, so as I can save here and then I can update this and see what I'm actually doing. Um, in general, the way I work is I always have my code editor on the left and my browser on the right just because that's how I'm used to working. But if you can set this up however you want. Some people put one on top, one on the bottom, or you know this could be. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how you set it up. But I like having always uh, everything set up just so I can see both of them really easily. And now the real fun begins. We need to start writing some HTML. So if you remember everything in HTML. Uh, all the code goes inside of triangle brackets. It's giving me an error because I have nothing in there. And the first thing we need to do is put in this line of code. Uh, I have to say doc type HTML. So just like my code editor can create a whole bunch of different types of files, my uh, the browser can read lots of different files. It can be a CSS file, JavaScript file, or an HTML file, a PHP file, there's a whole bunch. So this is a really important line. It always goes right at the top and it's telling the browser that it's looking at an HTML file. This is sort of the standard way of writing it where this is always in capitals. So it's exclamation mark. Let's make that a little bigger. So we have our exclamation mark doc type and then the HTML and it's all inside of my triangle brackets. Now this part can seem a little bit redundant, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down and I'm going to put HTML and uh, what we want to do next is we need to close our HTML. So I'm um, open triangle bracket, I'm writing out HTML, closing triangle bracket, and then down here at the bottom the same thing but with my forward slash just like we looked at the last video. So this is, seems a bit silly. We're telling our document, our browser, that we're looking at an HTML file. And then we're coming here and we're telling it that starting here will be HTML and the HTML ends here. But as redundant as it seems, we do have to do it. And one thing you'll notice is everything I put in my tags is lowercase, except for this doc type. In general, everything in the tags is lowercase and you'll be good to go. Uh, so a few other new tags that we're going to look at. Um, every website has two parts to it. It has what we call the head, close head, and the body, close body. Uh, let me space this out a little bit. And I'll put more space there. I wouldn't normally put all this space, but I just want to make it a bit easier for you guys to see. So here I'm opening my head and I'm closing my head and here I'm opening my body and I'm closing my body. The head is where the extra information goes. This stuff doesn't show up on the screen but it's essential to getting things to work properly plus we can add a little bit of extra info in there too. And the body, this is where all the content goes. Anything we want the person to see on their screen in their browser here, that has to go inside the body right here. And well, maybe it'll be a little bit boring. I'm actually going to start by doing a few little things up here in the head first. So uh, I'm going to come in the head and I'm going to write title and my first website and I'm going to close title. So I'm going to save my file and then I have to come over to my browser and I'm going to hit this little refresh and I'm about to push it. But what I want you to do right now, if you see this tab here, it just says index.html. And when I refresh, now it says my first website. So the title isn't something that shows up on my page because it's inside the head. It's extra information and it's being used for the tab up here. Uh, another place where the title will be used is if someone does a Google search for your website, it's the title that shows up in the Google search. It's not actually content from your site that will be there. So there's one other little thing that I'm gonna add in the head here, which is called a meta tag. So anyone who's done uh, a little bit of photography probably knows what the meta uh, or what meta information is. And it's sort of extra information. Um, in photography, when you take a picture with a digital camera, it's gonna save the ISO, it's gonna save the shutter speed, uh, probably even the location and time and date and all those things. 
So all that information is saved with the photo, but if you look at the photo, you don't see it. You have to use some software to you know, get that extra information. So a meta tag like this is a little bit the same. Uh, there's a lot of different ones, but the only one that's essential is the car set UTF. And you can see this is actually auto-filling for me, so I'm going to go right there and double click on it and get my car set UTF-8. And uh, this seems a little strange. Basically, we're just telling the browser what character set we're using. Um, it's all about the characters that are embedded. So all these letters that are on the screen, the computer doesn't really know what an F is. It's using this encoding system and UTF-8 is sort of the standard for most languages these days. Um, and it just saves all the characters that we'd ever want to put on the screen and we have to tell the browser that this is what we're going to be using. The other thing you'll notice here, and uh, most of these code editors do this by default, but my head is here and it's closing here. When I click there it's even underlining it to make it more obvious. Um, and then this is indented. And this indentation is just to make it more visually obvious that this stuff is inside there. So I could write it like this. It wouldn't make any difference to the browser. But um, by having it spaced out, and you can either do that with the tab key, and I'll come here and I'll push tab, and it creates just that space. Uh, other people like using the space bar. I'll put two or some people put four spaces. Um, and it's just to make a nice visual representation that this stuff is inside my head. And you could even do the same thing here with your title if you wanted to. So I have open title, this is inside my title tag, and then close title. But I think it's just a little easier to read uh, for a nice little short thing like that, just to put it like that for my title. Now we can finally put some stuff on our page. We can actually see some things showing up here. So uh, let's just jump right into our body tag. And I'm going to push tab because I'm inside my body tag. And right, let's just, you know, my first website. I'm going to push save, refresh, and look at that. I have some content on my page. Uh, I've just noticed when I'm saving most of the time here, I've been pushing um, control S, or if you're on a Mac, that would be command S, uh, which is, you know, file and just save. Um, so I'm, whenever you see me doing this, I'm just control Sing and then refreshing. It's much faster for me than having to jump up here every time. So I've been doing that uh, just in case you're wondering why you don't see me saving the file and I can still get it to work. So we don't really have much content on our page right now, but hey, it took us a lot of work just to get to this point. Uh, so give yourself a nice pat on the back for making it this far. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at really putting some content in here because just this little line of text isn't very much. So we're going to start exploring uh, paragraphs and headings and getting some, some content on there that looks a little bit better. But uh, be happy with what you have. And a little pro tip, um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Let's just take out some of this extra space that I don't need. And I don't really need this line. And you could, you know, every single page you're going to make is always going to start with this as the very basic. So you could save this document just like that and use it as a bit of a template file for every time you're starting up a new project. It's a nice starting point, especially when you're starting off. This is all you're really going to need for your first few little things. So uh, you might as well save it and just keep this as a little template that you can reuse every time. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to rewrite all of this um, each and every time. So I really hope you learned something watching this. I hope that it made sense and I hope that it's nice and clear and that you've been able to follow along. If it wasn't clear, if you have any questions whatsoever, hit me up down in the comments below. I definitely will get back to you. Uh, keep on watching. We're going to get on and be doing a lot of really cool stuff. It starts off really slow. We have a white page, some black text on there, but really, really soon you're going to be doing something really awesome. So keep following along. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the videos that are coming up and have yourselves a great day.